Coming up right now on Lifestyle Magazine, meet a woman who claims to know the secrets of a happy marriage. She says she knows how to make your marriage more vital, more fulfilling, and more exciting in just 10 seconds. And now the hosts of Lifestyle Magazine, Mike and Gail Tucker. <laughs> Did you know that a kiss can change the fabric of your relationship? Especially if it's a 10-second kiss. Thank you, sweetheart. Anytime. <laughs> Our first guest, Dr. Ellen Kreidman, is known as America's number one love expert. Now, that's some title. She's also a best-selling author and lecturer, and Dr. Ellen has educated, motivated, and inspired thousands of men and women on how to put fun, romance, excitement, and communication in their marriages. And she's here today to give us a crash course in healthy relationships. Welcome, Dr. Ellen. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for oh, having me. We are talking today with Dr. Ellen Kreidman, and we have her book here, The Ten Second Kiss. We highly recommend it to you. Uh, it's a marvelous book. But Dr. Ellen, what is the most important message that you would like to bring to us today about relationships? Well, probably the number one thing that I teach, and it's so important for couples to understand, a man falls in love because of the way he feels about himself when he's with a woman. And when he doesn't feel good anymore, he's going to find another woman that does make him feel good. Oh. And that's really what an affair is about. It isn't that he's in love with the other woman. What he's in love with is the way he feels about himself when he's with the other woman. That's an incredible concept. It is. And you know how many women have said to me, you know, now that I'm in love, I feel beautiful. Oh, I feel yeah. special. Uh -huh. We have uh -huh. a right to feel like that for the rest of our lives. And when we don't, we try to find someone that does make us feel good. Wow. So if you really understand this concept, it isn't about getting prettier or mm -hmm. thinner or making more money. Some of the most beautiful people in the world are by themselves. Some of the wealthiest people are lonely. Right. Mm -hmm. This is about how do I make another person feel like they matter more than anything else on this earth. Yeah. So it's not about my husband, but how do I feel about myself as a woman when I'm with him? Right. And it's not about me, but how does he feel about himself when he's with me? And if we can make each other feel so good, why would we ever want to be with anybody else? Uh, well put. Well put. Excellent concept. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it's not... I need to do this for myself no, or and you know, fix myself. No, and you know, there's so many people who are single who before they go on a date, they're saying, oh, gosh, I hope that person finds me intelligent. I hope they think I have a good sense of humor. Right. Mm -hmm. I hope they think I'm attractive. Sure. And I say, no, it's not about you. If they <laughs> walk away feeling like they've got a good sense of humor, that they're attractive right. and they're special, it, there's going to be a second and a third date and probably a proposal of marriage. That's incredible. <laughs> that's true. You know, that's, that's quite a concept, though. It is. It is. Because if you're, if you're dating someone and it's all about them, it's not not long before you're pretty bored with that, is exactly. it? Exactly. So this is, you know, this is a very me generation, me I oriented. Yeah. This is not in marriage. It's about the other person. And right. if we can constantly ask ourselves this one question, how does my mate feel right. about themselves when, when they're, they're in me. my presence? And if you can answer spectacular, yeah. you've yeah. got a great marriage. That's so, good. so my job is to make sure that Mike feels good about himself. Yes. Yes, because and have you ever been with couples and they're their own worst enemies? I and mean, oh, you go yeah. out with them on a Saturday night oh, yeah. and they're attacking each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're sarcastic, Torture. their or, eyes are rolling when yeah. the partner is or telling a story. Or making jokes at each other's expense. Exactly. So right. how does that person walk away feeling at the end of the night? Not, Not good. very good. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's really the key of longevity in a marriage. I mean, I've been married now for 40 years, so I'm telling you Wonderful. that I, I practice you what I teach. You know how to do it. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell us about communication. That's another important key, it isn't is it? It is very important. And I have to tell you that the average couple in the United States speaks 21 minutes a week. That's three minutes a, a day. Week? Yeah, me, that, a that, day. No, three minutes a day. That includes, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? How are the kids? Oh, Any horrible. mail? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, anything important happened today? Yeah. Three minutes, He's and then they go the to the cell lessons. phone, they go to the fax, they go to the computer, they, you know, doing anything but no. being with one another. Now, what in the world can be successful on three minutes a day? Could you no. raise kids on three minutes a day? No. Could you do your job on three minutes a day? No. How can you have a marriage and expect it to be successful if you're spending three minutes a day with each other? That's incredible. One of the things I talk about is it is so important to carve out time for each other. 30 minutes minimum where you share your day, he shares his day, because if you don't, the day Days become weeks, become months, mm -hmm. become years, mm -hmm. and there's two strangers sitting mm -hmm. across from each mm -hmm. other saying, I don't even know who you mm -hmm. are. And what's the point of that? Yeah. And, and here's the other thing, too. This is so important. Every person I know comes home and one of them says, hi, hon, I'm home. 
Why? Because they want to matter. They yeah. want to yeah. be yeah. greeted. Well, yeah. Somebody noticed I came. Exactly. Uh -huh. Now what happens? He comes home, he sees her on the telephone, and he thinks, I don't believe this. I haven't seen her for 10 hours, and she'd rather talk to her friends mm -hmm. than be with yeah. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He comes home, makes the right turn, starts opening the mail. She thinks, he'd rather look at the bills than yeah. be with me? <laughs> and 20 minutes later, this couple is having an argument. It has nothing to do with what mm -hmm. they're arguing about. Mm -hmm. What they're really saying is, oh yeah, you think you're going to ignore me? You're going to make believe that mm -hmm. I don't make a difference? Yeah. Well, then even an argument is better than the nothingness That's that right. I feel around here. definitely going to notice that I'm here. Yeah, one exactly. Way or the other. And right. if a couple could talk to one another, they would say, tell me why I matter. Tell right. me why I make a difference. And right. don't do it once. Do it every single yes. day of my life. But that's not the assumption that we have most of the time, is it? I well, mean, don't we get married and assume that, well, I love you, you love me, we're going to all be happy, we're yeah. going to raise a family, we'll be fine. Right. And, and people don't understand. It's the action that caused the attraction. Hmm. What you did in the beginning was spend time together. What you did was talk. What you did was hug. That's and true. if you're not doing those things anymore, then mm -hmm. how can you expect a marriage to That's be right. successful or mm -hmm. last? Mm -hmm. so what do you do when a marriage gets boring? Well, another question that I guess <laughs> asked a lot. And I hear so, uh, Dr. Ellen, my, my life is so boring. The marriage <laughs> is so boring. <laughs> and here's what I have to say. The best way not to have a boring marriage is not to be a boring person. Oh. And here goes. I no, know I'm going to insult yeah. one of your <laughs> audience members, but if you are bored, you are boring. You oh see, my. you can't be, if once you say, I'm bored, you're really saying, world entertain me. Somebody yeah. else out there mm -hmm. make right. me happy. Somebody, right. But if you say, I'm a bore, now you have to take responsibility. Right. And I always have, I have enough ideas for everybody. I always feel, <laughs> do something outrageous. Do something crazy. Do uh -huh. something that'll knock the socks off your partner. Because Give when us you, an example. Well, I always like to start with baby steps. So I will say, <laughs> one of the things you can do tonight is take out the white, boring light bulb, put in a red light bulb, and get it at any hardware <laughs> oh, store. Okay. He turns it or she turns it on and goes, ah! <gasps> And you say, you know what? Red is the color of love, and yeah. I wanted to fill this entire room with my love for you. Ooh, that's Just a, something that's a nice as touch. simple as yeah. that. Yeah. But the yeah. point is that it's going out of my way to show you that you're special, that you matter. I didn't do this for the relatives. Mm. I didn't do it for friends, for coworkers. I went out of my way to show I you that you matter, you. that you make a difference in my yeah. life. Hey, this is exciting stuff. And we can spend a lot of time talking about <laughs> sure this we because we can go on and on with this stuff, no doubt. We'll be right back with a couple who have put the 10-second kiss to the test in their own marriage. We learned English. Your kids can too. Just watch Hello Channel. We're back with Dr. Ellen, and we're joined by Ed and Dana. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Dr. Ellen, before we move on, we opened with The 10-Second Kiss, and that's the title of one of your books. Yes. Tell us a little bit about The 10-Second Kiss before we well, go on. I absolutely love the demonstration that you did. That was great. <laughs> I enjoyed it, too, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but you know what? I think that most people don't even recognize when that passionate relationship became a friendship mm. and became platonic. Mm. And one day, people wake up, the couple wakes up and says, you know what? We're roommates. Oh. And that's because when you watch this couple, they give, they're giving each other that little peck. I love you, honey. Yeah. There's no more passionate kiss. I want people to grab their mates tonight and give them a 10-second passionate kiss. Oh, that's that's the way you need to greet each other before you leave. If you're not a morning person and yeah. you just see each other in the evening, it sets the mood for the rest of the night if oh, that's, that's the way great. you greet each other. And if you have children, it's okay for them to see mommy and daddy connect. Yeah. Then you go to the kids and hug that's them. But great. you need to make that connection every single day. All right, everybody, did you hear that? The assignment tonight, 10-second kiss for everyone, exactly. for everyone who's listening to this program. All right, guys, have, you've read the book. Yes. Yeah. So did you learn new things? Was it a review of old things? What, what was this for you? There were some new things, and a lot of things just highlighted for us that mm -hmm. were great concepts for us to just review and mm -hmm. put back into practice in some cases. Yeah. So what have you been using from the book that has been helpful for you? Um, I think one of the things that we've really taken from it is he has a job where he has to leave um, very early in the morning. So right. he's gone by the time I get up and the kids are up. Mm. And he has to go to bed very early because of that. So we've really, it was good for us, good timing for us to read the book to know that we really need to carve out and be intentional about having alone time in the evening or else mm -hmm. before you know it, it's, you know, eight eight in the evening you've put the kids down and you're exhausted and you really don't you give yeah. to everybody first instead of really taking time for your relationship for so we've, we've yeah. started to really carve out that time for us and prioritize that so and you good. guys have been married how long 
coming up on 12 years this almost summer. 12 yeah, years. Almost and 12 you have years. children. We yep. have three kids. Yeah. So you are busy, busy people. Busy yeah. family. Oh, yeah. man. And one, one of the things that I talk about is the best gift you ever will give your children is a loving relationship with mm -hmm. each other. Absolutely. So everything right. that when I'm saying to carve out time, go on date night, mm -hmm. spend time mm -hmm. with each other and get the babysitter, it is in effect for the children because mm -hmm. when they have parents who are in love after all mm -hmm. those years, they feel safe and secure. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. Gail and I have been married 31 years. We still have a date night. We do. It's great. And it's, it's Every a, Thursday? Thursday nights, that's right. No matter right. what? No matter what. Someone's got to die for us to miss the date <laughs> night. And they've done that at times. So it's yeah. been very rude of them. Since we're pastors, that happens yeah, That happens. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, we, we are on that date night together on Thursday nights. So yeah, it's that's important. Great. What else have you taken from the book? Well, I love the 10 second kiss. Thank you. <laughs> I just, it is such a great way of connecting uh, when we mm -hmm. walk in the door. And um, I agree. It's just, it's also really wonderful for our kids to see it is. Yeah. us. And sometimes our little boy gets sandwiched in between us. Uh -huh. He's yeah. only three. And, That's uh, all right. Well, and it's they good. love that, don't they? They yeah. do. It becomes their hug, yeah. too, and their time, yeah. too. Yeah. I know there, there was a couple whose little five year old went over to the microwave and timed it and put it on. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, it's 10 seconds. And then they put it on the but it's important because you are a busy couple you know the shifts are different mm -hmm. and I hear all the time we don't have the time and my answer is make the time mm -hmm. this is the most important aspect of your life your marriage mm -hmm. everything else depends on it mm -hmm. I mean you're even better at work when your personal life is working so the better mm -hmm. your personal home life is the happier you are in your professional life Absolutely. Right. Yeah. you know the truth is there's nobody that doesn't have 10 seconds right yeah. right <laughs> and I think if you if you get the 10 seconds in and you reconnect after a day apart from one another, then I think you're more prone to want to carve out the rest mm -hmm. of the time that you need. Uh, that mm -hmm. was the concept that I loved from what when we heard you talk years ago, and uh, Mike and I actually had to demonstrate the 10 second kiss yes, at a did. conference. A conference of pastors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and a room full of them, and here we are kissing. <laughs> yes, I was the only female pastor, so we were the only ones that could get up there. <laughs> But um, the concept that I took away was that when you've been apart for a long time, you know, even I, I consider all day to yes. be a long time. Yes, it is. That, and you take those 10 seconds. Sometimes it's hard to kiss for 10 seconds, <laughs> but you, you do it in the like, Especially you, you laugh. Whoa, I want to I <laughs> stay close to him a little bit more, you know? That's true. Yeah. So it's a great reconnecting yeah. tool. And, and well, you know what? Yeah. We've also become a dog and cat petting society at night. Everybody is stroking yeah. their dog, stroking and I talk about baby. <laughs> And I'm saying, replace the pet with a partner. Yes. Really. <laughs> Put a yes. human head in your lap That's and right. stroke it. Yeah. Connect. We're mm -hmm. just constantly having to think about how does my mate feel about themselves? How am I going to connect? And it doesn't take hours. Mm -hmm. It takes minutes. Yeah. 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 No. So what are you guys working on right now? Is there anything that you're, you're uh, working on in your relationship to try to make it better? I think for yeah. me, uh, one of the things that was a great concept for me was the idea of Really, when my wife is talking to me, to give her my full attention, to not sit at the computer uh -huh. and put down the newspaper, uh, down turn the off the paper. TV, and and just to take concentrated time to listen to her. Right. And um, I really want to try and work more on that and, yeah. and get better at it. Yeah. Good. Good. I, I would say the same thing. That's the main thing that we're working on. That um, just the. Like you were saying earlier, the three minutes of connection time and conversation beyond, you know, mm -hmm. we want to take more than that. We don't want it just to be the kids' schedules or they, you know, right. I pack this lunch for them just so you know, and to really get to um, how we feel about things right. and not feeling like I have to um, offer a solution that he has to offer a quick fix, but just to to listen and be empathetic yeah. and he really hear what they're saying. Yeah. So yeah. That is one of the problems I think that a lot of us have when our mate poses a problem, we want to fix it rather than empathize with mm -hmm. it. And what usually they want, and Dr. Ellen, you correct me if I'm wrong, but what they usually want is our empathy rather than our solution. Absolutely. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it, it also filters down to the children too, to give them your absolute attention and yes. not sometimes come up yes. with advice. You know, if, if uh, your daughter or son comes home and says, you know, I got into trouble, what did you do? You must have done something rather mm -hmm. than just just let the child speak. Let's mm -hmm. let my mate speak and let me hear it from their point of view mm -hmm. and let me just be a good listener. Mm -hmm. And they learn those communication patterns from us. They're going to carry those mm -hmm. over into their relationships when they get married, the things that they've learned at home. Great stuff. Great stuff here. And I thank you for being here with us. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to come right back with another couple in just a moment. Stay tuned. Learn English and have fun.
Welcome back. What we've been hearing on this show is the idea of putting fun, romance, and communication into your relationship. Joining us now are Kurt and Colleen. And Dr. Ellen, you're going to do some coaching with them, I so am. we turn them over mm. to you. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. How long have you been married? 24, just about 24 years. And do you have any children? Yes, we have uh, two children, an 18-year-old son and a 20-year-old daughter. And either living at home? Our son is living at home oh. and our daughter's at college, coming home on breaks and okay. for the summer. And both of you, do you work? Yeah, yes. we both, both have full-time yeah. full full -time. jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the first thing I always like to ask a couple, just to get the pulse of their relationship, mm -hmm. is when is the last time the two of you went away by yourselves alone? Ah, two weeks ago, we okay. went to Hawaii and uh, we spent... Uh, Except that we weren't alone the end most of the time. We were alone, but I was for a business trip. Oh, that doesn't yeah. count. Now, business <laughs> trips do not count. What? When I talk about once a year, a one week, the, the okay. lover's plan is one night a week date night, once every three months, an overnight stay at a hotel. I call it a mini moon. Most people go on a honeymoon. This is a mini moon. And then once a year, a one week vacation for just the two of you. That means no friends, no relatives, no business associates. How about oh. kids? That no sounds kids. good. <laughs> your mindset is completely different. You, you want to keep the passion in your marriage. You have to connect again, and that's about being alone. When there are other people, you have a different frame of mind that you're going. If you're on business, you're not relaxed, and the two of you are not connecting. You're probably talking to business associates. She's talking to the wives of the business associates and you may spend a couple of minutes together but you're thinking about the next day and the next meeting that you have to go no, to. No, this is true. A lot of the time since we were full time we and we work close together, uh, we do talk about business an awful lot. Mm -hmm. I think the last time we were alone together was on our 20th anniversary uh, four years ago. We took a cruise <laughs> to Alaska <laughs> And we had a wonderful time for a whole week, but it was very different. Yes, and uh, that, but four years, that, it's not yeah, supposed that's, to last right. four years. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Once a year yeah. to make that kind of a plan, it is, again, you know, people think, I can't yeah. leave my children. This is for your children yeah. because well, the best gift, you want to be role models for them mm -hmm. in their relationship and mm -hmm. your children are older. Mm -hmm. They're watching you. They're seeing what mom and dad is doing. And so for them to see mom and dad take a vacation by themselves alone, that's what they're going to do when they get married. I know I have mm -hmm. two grown daughters now that are married and they have that date night once a week. And if they don't have it, they're disconnected. Oh, they go, of course, we get to babysit, but they do go <laughs> on that one week vacation because it is all about about connection. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, there is one thing that we do that I think has been helpful. Like uh, Mike said that he had his date night mm -hmm. with his wife. Mm -hmm. We try to every evening before we go to bed, take a mile and a half walk together and That's... there we share the day That's and we true. kind of uh, talk about how things are going basically in all aspects, all parts of our life. And because we like to read books and learn new things to help help our lives, we read together in the morning quite frequently or on weekends. That, that's, and that's wonderful. I yeah. mean, that's So that takes the place of the weekends that you have to spend away. Yes, and that kind of thing. yes. And I know we Take. spoke a little earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, we spoke a little earlier. You were, you were talking about some of the interests you have. Can you share some of that, uh, your, the concerns that you have yes, a couple? Um, you know, we have had some discussions, if you want to call them that. <laughs> Arguments would be another word for it. Um, I like to spend some time, you know, like going out golfing with uh, some of the guys or playing tennis with a, a friend of mine. And I sometimes get the feeling from her that, oh, so you would rather go out with them than spend time with me? this evening, mm -hmm. and I'm like, how do you deal with, uh, you know, that kind of dynamic? Well, first of all, a woman needs something to look forward to. So I believe that if you have a, a chunk of time that's going to be taken away from her, as long as she has something to look forward to when you come home, because you're going to go on a date, you're going to go out to dinner, then I don't think she's going to resent it as much. I think the resentment mm -hmm. comes that's with true. you're choosing to spend a chunk of time with this person doing whatever you like, mm -hmm. and then it's just coming home to good old me, and we just continue our normal routine rather mm -hmm. than we're going to do something special as well. It's like being on a permanent wait list. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Without, <laughs> without hope of ever, you know, getting together. That's right. Oh, you got and, trouble, Kurt. And, <laughs> and in a marriage, you heard me in the first segment, she needs to feel yeah. special and like a priority in, in your number one priority. And so as far as I'm concerned, you can have a weekend, you can have a night out, as long as when you come back, you make it a point to reconnect. So if you're going to take a weekend away, yeah. it's a weekend for the two of you then to reconnect. So are you saying, is it healthy in a relationship to not be together 24-7 necessarily, but to have some outside interests uh, of your own. Mm -hmm. Is that healthy? Or a absolutely. As long
long as you don't keep going this way, because right. people have outside interests, and you'll hear them saying we have completely different lives, mm -hmm. yeah. and they are not on the same path. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. great to go out yeah. and have your own, but then you've right. got to come back together again. And I believe that the amount of time that you spend apart <laughs> is the exact same amount of time you're going to have to spend back together again. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things oh. that happens, I think, mm -hmm. too, when you don't have enough time together is you have to find some form of connection. Right. So if it's not with your spouse, it might be with the children, mm -hmm. uh, might be with an activity or a hobby, right. or maybe some other person. And, you know, I know that I have dealt with that some over the years. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you see, that. here's the way I, I want couples to look at it. Your marriage is a corporation, okay, a, a separate entity. It's a living, breathing thing. And I may not want to take a walk on the beach with my husband. I may not want to go away for the weekend with my husband. I may not want to give him a 10-second kiss. But my marriage, this separate entity, demands that I do it. And if I don't, just like a corporation is going to dissolve, so is the marriage. Mm. Mm. So you Good do point. some things you don't want? to do? I don't feel yes. like doing a ab that? Absolutely. Yeah. You know what? I always hear that. You know, well, what if I'm not in the mood? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't think anybody, when they hear that alarm ring at 6.30 or 6 yeah. o'clock in the morning, says, oh, I can't wait to get out of yeah. bed. You yeah. know, you grudgingly yes, say, oh, I wish right. I could stay in bed, but you don't. And at the end of the day, you feel productive. That's you've earned right. a paycheck. You feel you've been right. useful. It's the same in your marriage. You may not want to do it, but do something that she wants to do. But after you see her so happy, so loving, yeah. so accepting of you and your time away, then you're going to say, you know what? This is a good deal. Well, I don't feel like breaking away from the Curtin Colleen Corporation, but we're going to have to do so right now. We'll be right back with some final thoughts right after the break. Why should you watch Hello Channel? Because learning English should be inexpensive, and learning English should be available to everyone. If you want a brighter future, join us and say hello. We have had a spectacular time today with Dr. Ellen, and I hate to bring it to a close. It's been great, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Dr. Ellen, great. do you have a couple of final words for us? I always have a couple of words. <laughs> the important thing to remember is whatever you did to get me, you need to do three times as much to keep me. Mm. That's if an you can concept. remember that, yeah. you will have a very happy marriage. Oh, that is wonderful. <laughs> hey. We want to thank you guys for being thank here. You, oh, so so much. you were spectacular. Right. You were open and vulnerable, and we, and we thank you for that. And Dr. Thank Ellen, we cannot thank, thank you. you enough. Thank you for having me. We invite you to come to our website at lifestyle.org to check out more information on this program. And as we leave, why don't we try just one more time this 10-second kiss kind of a thing? Would that be all right with you? Yeah. All right, let's go for it. <laughs>